Napoleon has been quoted as having said, an army marches on its stomach, and that is certainly is true. As long as there's plenty of good, nutritious food, preferably fresh foods, and preferably tasting foods, then an army can continue to function. But what happens when they start to run out of food? Well, that's when troops will reach into their backpacks and pull out what has been termed, at least in history, as their iron rations. And that's what this video will be all about. Today, we're going to be making herbs worst, otherwise known as pea sausage, which has been in use since the 1900s by the German army. If you're interested, keep watching. Before we get started, just a couple of things. First, I want to credit one of my viewers, Pygar2, for the inspiration to make this video. And my viewer commented on one of my earlier videos where I made pemmican using modern methods. And they suggested I take a look at Herbswurst. So I did. And I found quite a bit of interesting history on it. And I thought it was, was worth looking into a little bit deeper. So Herbswurst has been made since the 1900s for the German army. Now, of course, it's been replaced with more modern rations. And it was often referred to as the iron ration. Now, a little bit more digging, and I discovered the term iron rations have been applied to a lot of foods carried by soldiers in the field. Something more of a last resort rather than a mainstream or an everyday type of a meal. They had to be something that were shelf stable, didn't require any refrigeration, would last a long period of time, were easy to prepare, were highly nutritious and calorie dense, often lacking in a lot of flavor, but something that the soldier could survive on until better foods became available. So herbs were basically is German for pea sausage. And I'll get into the ingredients and why it's called that in a moment. But first off, just a short history on it. So herbs were was created in 1867 by Johann Heinrich Grunenberg in Berlin. And basically is made up of pea flour, pork meat, pork belly, fat and onions. At least that's what the original recipe had in it. Now I'm going to be changing things up for simplicity's sake and I'll talk a little bit about my reasons why as we go along. So that's the basic uh, ingredients for this recipe but there is one other historical quote that I want to read to you because I think this says a lot about what this is and how valuable it may be for you. So this comes from the uh, one of the books by Horace Kephart Camping and Woodcraft from the chapter, chapter entitled Concentrated Foods, and it reads, <clears throat> It never spoils, never gets any punkier than it was at the beginning. The stick of herbs worst that you left undetected last year in the seventh pocket of your hunting coat will be just as good when you discover it again this year. Mice won't gnaw at it, bugs can't get at it, moisture can't get into it. I have used rolls that have lain so long in damp places that they were all moldy outside, yet the food within was neither worse nor better than before. I think that kind of describes it quite well. All right, what I'll do is I'm just going to take you around to the counter behind me. I'll show you the ingredients that are going to go into the making of herbs with herbs worse. Then we'll put some together and talk about substitutions, and then we'll talk about how it would be used. Okay, so as I mentioned, the original recipe for herbs were cont uh, contained things like pea flour, pork bellies, pork fat, and a few other ingredients. Now, when I started to look around, I found out that's not quite as easy to get a hold of as it was maybe in the past. So I wanted to look for substitutions, things that were readily available to most people in most places. I also wanted to see if I could change it up just a little bit, something that would be more closely related to my keto diet, which is basically high fat, high protein, and low carbohydrate. So I will give you the original recipe that I did find online that That'll be in the video description as well as the links if you're interested in taking a look at that. But the recipe I'm going to give you now is going to be simplified to say the least, easy to find ingredients, and easy to put together. So to start with, since I, and I did try this by the way with pork bellies, it can be done, but boy, it was a lot of work because you have to render it down to get the fat extracted from the pork belly. So you can do that. And if you want to be a traditionalist, by all means have at it. It's just a lot of work. 
So if you're not going to render down pork bellies to get the fat out, what are you going to use? Well, then the nice thing is rendered pork fat is readily available everywhere. Lard, that's what rendered pork fat is. So the brand of lard that I'm going to be using is one made here in Nova Scotia known as Tender Flake. So you can take a look and find whatever uh, brand of lard, as long as it's 100% pure lard, then this is going to work. I know this doesn't sound appetizing, but trust me, the end product will be more flavorful than you're give, going to give it credit for now. Now, just a quick note. Don't go looking for this in the refrigerated section. This will be in the on the shelves in the baking section. Reason being is it's shelf stable. It does not require refrigeration. And of course, that's one of the key attributes that you want from an iron ration, something that you don't have to worry about having, you know, not enough, not being cold enough. Now, we'll talk about how they last in your backpack a little later, but you'll find these in the baking section of your grocery store, usually, or any other store that sells baking goods as well. So that's ingredient number one. Now, I'm going to be using it's just over a hundred grams, which is just over a half a cup. So not quite a quarter pound, we'll say, uh, of lard here. And we're gonna be melting that down in the pot and it melts down very easily. Now, the next ingredient in the original recipe was pea flour. And I thought, oh, that can't be that hard to find. So I went to one of our bulk food stores known as Bulk Barn. Pea flour was not to be found. So I looked around and I found a few other ingredients that I thought would work for this. And I believe they do. And I've tried this and, and I'm happy with the result of it. You may be able to find pea flour. If you can't and you want to be a traditionalist, you can make your own. Dried peas for pea soup or split pea soup will work. You just have to grind them down into a fine powder. So I was going to do that for this recipe, but then I thought I'm going to try something a little bit different. This is a soup mix that I got at Bulk Barn, and it's a mixture. And let's see if I can tip it into the camera a little bit. It's a mixture of three different types of lentils and barley, all dried up. And normally you would just saute, not saute, sorry, but simmer these for a long period of time to soften them up for any type of a soup you might want to make it out of. Um, what I did, put them in a grinder and ground them into a fine powder. Now, in full declaration, took a bit of time. They're a little harder to grind than I originally thought they are. Now, mind you, I was using a coffee grinder, so that probably was not the best tool for it. But if you have a grinder of some type that you can grind down the dried lentils or dried peas, if again, if you want to be traditional, then you can make the flour required for this. Now, lentils are not considered keto by nature. They're fine for anybody who's not on keto. They're still very nutritious and they have a high amount of protein of their own but I wanted to boost the protein just to change the ratios a little bit. So one thing that was easy to find was pea protein. So it is extracted from peas, but it is a vegetarian style of uh, nature of protein. And so I did a mixture of uh, pea protein and ground lentils to make the flour, the mixture that I'm going to be using. And again, I'll be giving you the ratios, but this is 200 grams of the mixture. And this contains 50 grams of pea protein and 150 grams of that lentils. And you can still see when you look through it, flecks of the different colors of lentils and the like. It's not a super fine power, uh, flour, but it is powdered enough for this reason. Okay, so that's the other major ingredient. Now, the third ingredient, I wanted to give it some characteristics of the traditional and flavor, of course, and to boost it in nutrition, bacon bits. So this is just a full package, 85 grams, of real bacon bits, and you don't have to spend a lot on the high name brands. This was actually a no name brand from one of our local grocery stores. But as you can see, it is real bacon grips, or bacon bits. So that's the third ingredient that I'm gonna be putting into this mixture. Now, if you want to go further and add things like dried onions, uh, spices and herbs, then by all means, but like pemmican, I'm going to suggest you stay away from salt. And the same reason with the pemmican, salt draws water. You don't want water being drawn into this mixture. You want it to keep it as uh, water-free as possible, and salt would uh, actually work against you. But you can put anything else you want in this. My recommendation, if you're going to be making this for the first time, as I am with, not the first time for me, but the first, the recipe I'm making today, I'm going to leave it as... Uh, flavor free as I can. In other words, no additional spices or herbs added into it. 
that I'll, I'll add when I go to make the soup. So I'll, I'll add things like garlic, of course, so you can add any uh, hot spices you want to, anything you want. What you're recreating with this mixture once you take it to the field is basically pea soup, a split pea soup that is a high fat content in it, more than a regular pea soup would have. So whatever flavors you think would go along with pea soup, that's what you can add to the mixture now, or as I'm going to do, wait until I prepare it in the field. All right, so just a couple of other things. What else are you going to need? Obviously, you're going to need a heat source and a pot, something that you can melt the uh, lard down. And it doesn't have to be on high heat either. So I'm going to be doing it over my kitchen range here, and it's, it just takes a low to medium heat to do that. You're going to need something to mix things up with spatula. That's all I need for that. Something to scoop it out into a mold, and that's for me is going to be a spoon. Now, I said a mold, so what I'm going to be using is a muffin tray and some muffin papers. Actually, this is the first time I used the metal one. The last time I did this, I used our silicone muffin tray, but unfortunately, that has gone missing. We're not sure where. I like using the silicone muffin tray because once everything is cooled and hardened up, they push right out of the molds themselves. A little bit more difficult or a little bit more challenging with a metal one like this. If you want to, you can just, after everything is hardened up, heat it a little bit, place it in some warm water, heat it up, and they'll pop out again, of course. But uh, I'm, I'm going to try using muffin papers today to see how that works. So I really don't know how well this is going to work. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, then I'll just peel the muffin papers off them afterwards. The whole point is just to get them out of the muffin tray a, a little easier. Basically, that's all we're going to do. Now, I will tell you now, for storage purposes, after I'm finished, I am going to vacuum seal each of these pucks or these muffin-sized pieces and put them in the freezer. You don't have to, as according to the original recipe, this will last for years without it, but uh, it's just nice to know that it is that much safer if you do it that way. It'll last that much longer. We'll talk more about that when, actually when I go to prepare it, because I think you'll find it of interest. Now, if you want to, again, be more traditional, while the material is still soft with some warmth in it, you could use a sausage casings, either the natural or synthetic sausage casings, and stuff it in. If you have a sausage making machine at home, you can make a sausage roll out of this material, and that will keep it in one place and, uh, and safe also from uh, the elements on the outside of it. I think there's any number of options here. I'll put all the type of options that I came up with in the video description just to expand your choices if you're interested in doing so. Okay, that's the basic ingredients, the tools that I need. Let's get started. All right, as we get started, you can see that my lard has been liquefied. It really goes quickly. It doesn't take long at all to turn it into a nice clear liquid. Now, just before I start adding my ingredients, just for those who may not be aware, lard is to pork what uh, tallow is to beef. So it is rendered organ fat from pigs as opposed to rendered organ fat from beef or other uh, animals such. All right, so now everything is nice and soft. I'm gonna start adding in my flour mixture. I'm not gonna add it in all at once, a little bit at a time. That might be a little warmer than I need it to be. I can see it bubbling, almost cooking in there. I uh, want to add a little bit in at a time to make sure that it is well mixed through, lumps are gone. What you're looking for in doing this is a mixture that is almost dry looking, quite firm. You don't want a, a wet, runny mixture at all. That would be a, a mismatch in the ratio between the dry and the wet ingredients. At some point, I'll start to add in my bacon bits on top of everything else once I get this all mixed through. Now, again, in full disclosure, I have modified my own recipe a number of times trying different ingredients. And just in case I don't get this ratio as spot on as I want to see it. I know what it should look like it, but if I don't get perfectly close, I have a little bit more of this flour mixture that I can add to it to thicken it up. But I'll keep an eye on it to make sure it's not getting too thick. It smells good. You see how it's changing color. Now, if I you were using P 
tea flower, you would have something that is much more green, but when you're using the mixed lentils like I am and the pea protein, which is a very light yellow color, then uh, it's not going to be near as dark. You know, I think I'm going to throw my bacon bits in at this point. I don't know if there's a, an exact right time to do it, but in go my bacon bits. That's a lot of bacon bits. Look how quickly that thicken things up. I still have quite a bit of this to go. And well, let's put it all in. So you want to work this while it is warm because it will thicken up, as you can see it doing, very quickly. And at that point, it uh, if you let it, once it cools, it's going to be quite hard, quite uh, dry looking, which is fine. That's what you want for the long-term storage of it. All right, this is working and happening very quickly. I'm going to quickly finish this off. I got to reposition the camera so you can see it being placed into the trays. I said this stuff does harden up really quickly. All right, so you can see with my, I'm not even sure I'll have enough, but you can see that I have six of the muffin tin with papers in them and six without. So we're going to start with the ones that have. Now, if I get it right, and based on my experience, this is about the right size, each one of these will make a small pot of soup, somewhere in the nature of a little over two cups. So we'll talk about preparing this and eating this and a few minutes time. I just have to work a little quickly here. I think a small spoon might have been, look at that, I don't have enough to fill all the others. That's not unexpected, that's pretty much where I thought things would end up. I just want to make a, wanted to make a small batch for demonstration purposes today. And yes, you can use your finger, but it is hot, I'll tell you. Better to use a spoon. Try to even it out a little bit. This is kind of like my extra material here. That seems to be coming through. That's well, looking pretty good. I am going to allow this to cool before we continue the video, so I will be cutting away for a few minutes to allow this to cool, and then we'll come back and finish off the rest of the instructional portion. All right, it's been about 45 minutes since I put the herbs worst in the muffin papers inside of the muffin tin, and they, they've hardened up really nicely, you can see. They're nice and hard like that. Now, for storage purposes, I am going to take them out of the muffin papers and put them in the vacuum sealed bags and then put them in the freezer for long-term storage. Again, this is not something you have to do, and I'll, I'll talk more about that when I actually go to prepare a meal from this because I think you'll be surprised just how long they will last outside of uh, that type of a storage, cold storage. So it's absolutely not necessary. Now, another interesting thought, some of you are likely aware of this. I know that some of my viewers had commented on this before, and that is that the company Knorr, K-N-O-R-R, -R, actually used to make herbs worst up until 2018, at which time they stopped production, which is really unfortunate. It'd be nice if there was in the market right now places you could buy herbs worst because, you know, what a great idea, right? Instant pea soup. And the nice thing about this soup mix is that you can customize it any way you want either now in the preparation or later in the field. So I did mention this was an iron ration, something that soldiers would use when they have their regular food source not available to them. But it can be more than that. It can actually be just supplemental to take other food that they may have. Maybe they do have fresh meat and they want to just stretch it out to make a, a bigger meal out of it or last longer. So uh, they can do that. It doesn't have to be a full meal replacement. It will act as a full meal replacement, 
but you can use it in conjunction with other foods at the same time. So if you have some fresh vegetables or some fresh meat that you want to put in and create kind of a stew rather than a pea soup consistency, then this makes a, a great base that is really calorie dense and packed with a lot of nutrition and still a lot of flavor. I tasted some of the bits of this as I was cleaning out the pot after making these pucks up and it's going to be really, really tasty. Now, I just want to talk about substitutions for a minute because um, you know, I made a very simplistic version of Verbs Worse. I used materials that were available, quite readily available to most people, I think. It moves away from the traditional recipe quite a ways, but I think it retains enough of the originality to be still qualified as an Herbs Worse. But there are a few things you can do here. I experimented doing this with tallow because after the pemmican exercise, I have a lot of tallow left over and that tallow is, is keeps a long, long time as you would know, of course. So yeah, you can make this with tallow. You don't have to make it with lard. I'll tell you, it'll be even more shelf stable if you make it with the tallow or you can do a mixture, do 50% tallow and 50% lard. Now, the only reason I'm saying this is because Tallow is a little harder to get a hold of. I had to, well, I did find some in the grocery store. If you go back and look at that video uh, in the, on the making of pemmican. But for the most part, I got some organic organ meat from beef that uh, I rendered down and made my own tallow. So I got a really good high quality. That took a lot of work. First, I had to source it and then take the time to render it all down. And then I just put it in molds and, you know, I've got a, a lot of it left over yet. But, you know, if you have the tallow, great. If you don't, you don't need it. You can use the lard, but mixing the two is an option. What is another couple of options? Well, as I mentioned, I'm using the dried lentil flour, but I've done it with straight up pea protein. I've done mixtures of pea protein, hemp protein, and even lupin flour. For those of you who follow my channel, know that lupin flour is also another high protein flour material. And this is what's nice. You know, if you, they all have different flavor profiles. They all add something different to the mixture. So it's something that you can experiment with. In, in small batches, like I did, when you start with about 100 grams of the lard, then you're really only going to get about six pucks, or in the muffin tin, that is, of uh, those. So you can make small batches like that just to experiment and with the different flavors. Uh, another way of doing this is other dried vegetables. Like if you want to add dried onions, you want to add dried carrots or anything else, I guess, for that matter, you can put it all in at the same time and just, again, add to the nutrition, the flavor, whatever else you might want to call it, of the original recipe. Now, when it comes to packaging it, I mentioned that the original would have been put in sausage cases and yeah that's how it would have been stored and I'm doing it with vacuum seal but you could also and I tried this it does work it's not my favorite way is I use parchment paper so I took the herbs worst while it was still hot and I laid it out on a piece of parchment paper and made like a long roll of it like you might do with a dough of some type and then rolled it up in the parchment paper and allowed it to harden there then I could just cut off sections and store it that way. So that's another way of doing it. You can just twist the ends up and parchment paper is pretty good at keeping things uh, secured inside and you know protected as well. So just another option. Um, yeah, so I did, oh, other meats. Now I've used bacon bits in this one. Maybe that's not your thing. If you have any dried meats as well, so back to the pemmican. If you actually have dried and powdered beef, then nothing wrong with using that as well in there. So there, there are lots of options uh, for making this. Now, it varies away from the original recipe, but I think it's all fair. You're not necessarily trying to be a traditionalist. You're trying to make something that you can put in your food bag for taking out in the woods, taking hunting, for long-term storage, for whatever reason that you need to do that or want to do that. Then this is something that will work for you know, virtually all of those scenarios. Okay, I think I've talked enough about the ingredients and the options as well as the method for making it. What I haven't talked about is preparation of this in the field. So what I think I'll do is I'm actually going to make a separate video where I'll take one or more of these pucks with me out to the woods and actually cook some up for you there. Now I do have videos where I've done it with some earlier versions, but I'll take one of the ones uh, or a couple of the ones I made today out into the field and we'll talk about preparation and maybe some of the alternatives or uh, other ways of preparing it while you're out in the field. Now it's time to open this up video up to you. 
If you have any comments, questions, suggestions for changes, alternatives, or even other iron ration type of meals that I could put together, put it all in the comments section below. As I mentioned, I will put the original recipe I found for Herbs Worst in the video description as well as the link to where I found it. I'll put my recipe and I'll even put a few suggestions for alternatives, but we'll add your comments into that at a later time. All right, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.